Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 with Nottingham Forest. We are still in the beta. It is season two. We unfortunately missed out on playoffs by, I think it was one point in the end. It was just the one point that we missed out on the playoffs by. We are into the new season. We've done some transfer business somehow and we've sold some players. Let's go through the players that we've sold first because there's quite a few of them. There is five to be exact and the majority of them have gone in order to actually just trim down the wage budget because we are massively over our wage budget. Gaboli Aribe is the first one. He's gone to Peterborough for £110,000. I'm still paying £1,000 of, uh, of his salary uh, per week because basically I couldn't get rid of him any other way. But it's better to pay £1,000 than £5,000. For £175,000, Luke Steele, the 34-year-old English goalkeeper, has left and gone to Sheffield United. Not really much we can say about him. For £1.8 million, Apostolos Velios has signed for Rangers in Scotland. He spent last season out on loan at Avasland Beveren. He was another player who was just getting paid too much money, and we weren't ever going to make use of him. For £3.5 million, we have sold last season's top scorer, Hilal Soudini. He, or Sudani, sorry, he's gone to Sheffield United as well. Like I said, three point, I think it was £3.5 million we got for him. Was it 3.5? It was 3.5. Um, yeah, I was planning on basically not playing him anyway. So to get some money from him is actually quite useful. And the final player to leave is Jao Carvalho, who has signed for West Bromwich Albion for about £15 million in total. I basically didn't realise that we'd already bought him last season and spent more money than what we've actually got for him. So, he's left for 12.25 actually. Uh, we bought him for £13.5 million. He does have a 50% sell-on, so any money that comes in, 50% of it, will come straight to us. Of which I think some more will probably go off back to uh, Benfica as well. But, he has left. He's helped our finances a hell of a lot. Problem is, we are still well over our wage budget we can't really get any lower than that because nobody wants to sign any more of our players i'm trying to get rid of graben i'm trying to get rid of uh bridcut as well there's a few other players who are earning sort of 15 grand a year that i'm trying to get rid of and nobody actually wants them three players have joined the club or should i say four players have joined the club only three of them though we can actually make use of, and we'll come to the fourth one in a moment. Jared Thompson is the first up. He is a Northern Irish goalkeeper. He was bought by our head of youth development. I thought he looked all right, so I went, you know what? Yeah, let's do that. Now, I'm going to claim that I know who these people are, but I have no idea. They were already agreed when uh, the transfers were already sorted out before I even joined the club, as far as I know, because I certainly did not make any offers for these two players. So first up, or second up, sorry, is Rucker Ruka, Portuguese left-back slash left-winger. He has signed from Mafra on a free transfer. He has a work permit, which is something that I wasn't expecting. And the other player to sign that I had no dealings with at all is Eric Exposito, who is a Spanish striker signed from Cordoba, or was it Las Palmas? I think he came from Las Palmas. Uh, yeah, he was on loan at Cordoba. He's joined from Las Palmas. He actually looks quite good. He's worth £2.2 .2 million. He'll probably play some games for us. And the final player to join is Diogo Goncalves. Yes, he has extended his loan deal. Unfortunately, we are paying monthly for him and he doesn't have a work permit. And I can't cancel the deal, which I, I don't know whether this is a bug or what, but yeah, I can't terminate the deal. He has no work permit. Um despite the fact it never told me he'd need a work permit so I just kind of blindly accepted the deal so yeah he's here for another year and can't kick a ball for us so yeah that is the transfer business um we've not really strengthened at all we do have a lot of our players who are out on loan last season have returned so we're going to actually have to try and make use of some of those injuries have kind of disappeared uh Jack what's his face uh where, where is his name what's his name Jack Robinson, that's the guy. He is still out injured, but he's he's almost back. Two to five weeks, apparently, he's going to be back. So, our team is... It's, it's weaker. It's certainly weaker, but I wouldn't say it's terrible. First game of the season, then, up against QPR. So, it's the same team that we played in the last episode, I think. Steve Bruce is still in charge. We drew, I think, was it nil-nil in the last episode? So, hopefully, we can do one better and actually score a goal. I... I'd take a one-all draw rather than a nil-nil. 
the starting lineup that we are going to go for then for the QPR game. We're sticking with the 4 1 4 1 formation. But, um, basically, I'm going to stick with this formation until it stops working. In goal is going to be Costel, Pantilamon, Dariqua, Worrell, Hefele, and Ruka will be the back four. So. Only one player in that was here last season. That's Hefele. Ruka, new signing. Worrell spent last season out on loan at Rangers, I think. And Dariqua was also out on loan somewhere. And I can't actually remember where. Panagiotis is going to be that reducer behind Ben Osborne and Ryan Yates. Ryan Yates is playing today because Joe Lolly and Matty Cash are going to be the wingers today. Matty Cash would normally be that advanced playmaker. But our right-sided midfielder, I can't remember who it is, is currently out injured. And up front is going to be Zach Clough, but strikers don't score goals, so it doesn't really matter who's playing there. Oh yeah, that's why uh, Matty Cash is playing as a winger, because Goncalves would normally be there, and he's not allowed to play there. Great. QPR playing the 4-1-4-1 again, which I'm pretty sure they played last time. So, this is probably an identical match to what we saw in the last episode. Hopefully... We can, uh, like I said, actually get a win. It does reset the camera angle. Every time you close the game, the camera angle resets. Fact. I've worked that one out. We've got a corner early on. Joe Lolly takes it. It's gone to the penalty spot and cleared. Panagiotis is hopefully going to get there first, and he does, but he cannot pass it forward to find Joe Lolly. Silla to Freeman running down the left-hand side. Plenty of space to run into. Crosses in. Hefele can clear. Eze goes for goal. Takes the deflection. Furlong crosses in, and Idrissa Silla has made it 1-0 to QPR after just six minutes on the clock, and that all came from our corner. It's not started well, has it? Corner for QPR. Freeman takes it towards the back post. Worrell heads clear. Eze gets it. Runs. Finds Freeman again in the middle. Tries to find Shibola. Luongo. Shibola again all the way back though to the defender. Luongo. Silla's there. And how has Silla done that? Silla was on the floor. He was laying down and somehow sprung to his feet and managed to get the ball. Unless that was one of my defenders who was laying down. So what, cha what happens here? Yeah, Silla was on the floor. He was on the floor, how did he do that? I'm going to demand more, but so far this season, this formation isn't working. What a shock in throw on. He does win the ball back though. Panagiotis, Rooker, on the left-hand side, number 90, crosses in. It's not a great cross, but Yates is there, and Ryan Yates has made it 2-1. I say it's not a great cross. Probably the best cross that we've seen so far. So at the moment, it's just Silla. Silla is just playing a lot better for them. Everyone else is playing average. We're playing average as well, apart from Yates. Dariq was not going to get there first. Luongo for QPR inside, deep inside his own half. Terrible pass. And Zach Clough, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, still cannot score goals. Final five minutes of the first half. And this mess, 6.4, 6.3, 6.4. Strikers can't do the business. They just could not do it. And I don't understand why. Half time, we are 2-1 down. But I think we've got ourselves back into this game. Joe Lolly apparently... Isn't playing very well. Assertively uh, unlucky, I'm going to say. Because I think we're doing all right. I'm going to do possibly a change up front. Zach Clough for Eric Esposito. So we're going to see the uh, the Spaniard. I think he's a Spaniard. He's going to make his debut in English football. Even though he shouldn't legally be allowed to. Just gone beyond the hour mark. We've had nothing happened in the second half. Get creative. Go and, and be more attacking as well. Derek Will with a free kick. Find Matty Cash. Panagiotis, Yates, Osborne goes for goal from outside the area and Lumley makes a save. It's going to be a corner. We've got 20 minutes to play. Ben Brereton, former Nottingham Forest players, just scored for Blackburn. Rucker's corner comes in. Jake Bidwell clears. Cash to Osborne all the way back out to the corner taker. Rucker crosses in. Yates was there again, but it's cleared again. Dariqua now isn't going to do anything with it. We've got a free kick just inside the QPR half. of Rucker on the left. Forward to Joe Lolly. Osborne, Rucker again, Osborne again, passing it, but not really going anywhere. Hefele to Rucker, to Osborne, to Rucker, to Osborne, to Rucker. Lovely passing between those two, getting their pass percentage up. Crosses in, it's gone all the way through, Matty Cash has scored. We are drawing two all, Rucker's cross once again makes the goal happen. We've got 19 minutes to play, can we steal a winner? I'm going to try and do a sub, Joe Lolly is going to come off. I don't really have anyone who can... Uh, Fulfill that role. So, Casado on. We're going to swap you to over. Rucker is going to be pushed up forward. We've got 10 minutes left. Would a draw away from home against QPR be a bad result? I think it's probably an acceptable result. QPR probably one of the better sides in the league. Rucker gets the ball, runs at his man, plays it all the way back to Hefele. We are 43 seconds over the allotted two minutes of injury time. So this is going to be the final highlight of the game. And it's probably going to lead to absolutely nothing. It is going to end 
two all in London, QPR versus Nottingham Forest. It's not the worst result. We're still undefeated in competitive games. One match in then, we are 10th, QPR 11th, Sheffield Wednesday 12th, Swansea in 13th, just the two matches drawn so far, Brentford, Newcastle yet to play, so we might be as low as 11th, or maybe 12th, I don't know how it would work if they draw. A bit of transfer news has happened in between matches, Claudio Jacob, the 32-year-old Argentine midfielder, has left and has signed for Norwich, and it has also caused some problems with Michael Hefele, apparently, he's gone for £2.8 million, which for a player who really wasn't getting into my team... That's not bad money. Uh, Michael Hefele doesn't seem himself at the minute. There is something getting him down. I think it might uh, might have the f- something to do with the fact that we sold Claudio Jakob. Uh, shut up. Um, what are you saying? He was getting. He was earning too much money. He was earning too much money. We need to get him off the wage bill. No, don't be doing this now. I'm gonna try this one. It's never a good thing. But I'm basically gonna say shut your mouth. Look, it's done now, and there's nothing I can do to change it. So let's just put things behind us and get on with your job. Ah, uh, you can be dismissive as you want, I'm not back. What do you want me to do? Sign him back? I've got no money, I can't do it. Right, I'm just going to be be blunt. Look, he's left and it isn't changing. Get on with it. We're getting nowhere. Okay, Did that, do you say you want to leave? Do you, do you actually want to leave the club? He's just unhappy at the sale of a player. Well, I mean, you're one of our best players. If you go, that £7 million might come in handy. Oh god, it's all kicking off. Brentcup, Pantillamon, Robinson and Casado are all annoyed as well that I uh, shouldn't have actually sold Claudio Jacob. Right, what are you going... Look, what... God, Christ, how many options are there? Unfortunately, he was just earning far too much for it to be sensible to keep him around. Right, three of them are happy, Pantillamon's annoyed. Um, I simply will not tolerate this lack of professionalism. It's gone far enough. I think that was very productive. Let's just ignore Pantillamon. And we've actually made a signing as well now. It's only on loan, and it is from Southampton. It is Michael Oberfemi, the 19-year-old Irish striker or trequatista slash advance forward, maybe a right winger. Didn't think of that. He could be my right winger. He's joined on loan for the season. He's coming in as a rotation player. I don't know how much it's costing us. £26,000. That's all it's going to cost us for the year. Seems like it's a reasonable deal. I'm hopefully going to get another player in on loan from Southampton as well, but he's most definitely going to be a backup one. It is transfer deadline day, and I've got players that I need to shift. Lewis Graben is one of them, Liam Bridcutt is another, Ben Watson is another. There's These three players, for sure, need to leave the club. Matty Cash has just had an offer from Huddersfield that I rejected come in. Zach Clough, people want him on loan, he's not going anywhere, he's probably going to be playing a lot of football. Tyler Walker, people want him as well. Saying that, we've got these four, they need to just get out of the club, just leave. Perfect. Rangers have made an offer for Lewis Graben for one and a half million pounds. He is off out the door. Nobody else. Liam Bridcut, Shrewsbury want him. Michael Dawson, Ben Watson. Nobody wants any of them. Ben Watson, go talk to people. Go leave. Go find some other teams that actually might want to sign you. We have made our second loan signing from Southampton. It is Jake Vokins, the 19-year-old left-back. Is it Vokins or Vokins? I'm not quite sure. He's come in as a rotation player. Similar to the uh, Michael Obafemi deal. £20,000 for the entire year. If he doesn't play, he doesn't play. The concern is that the transfer window is shut. And I'm hoping it is only shut because it's only shut in England. I'm hoping the grab and deal to Rangers can still go ahead... Uh, so far, I mean, this is interesting. So if you go on salary, we should be finishing ninth. I want to be finishing higher than ninth, maybe eighth, if you're as we're on par. I want to be ga- aiming for like fourth. Fourth is kind of my, my target. Have they actually done the predictions? Can we see, what am I doing? Click there. So the season preview puts us down in 14th. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting to be, be a lot higher up than that. Let's see how that goes, shall we? Match day two then up against Barnsley, who are Barnsley local? I think they must be reasonably local. Um, so Barnsley down in 19th place. They lost their opening game of the season. Can we see what it was? Or does it just say they lost? Uh, they lost 2-0 to Sheffield United by the looks of it. The starting lineup then that we're going to go for against Barnsley. Pantillamon will be the goalkeeper. Dariqua, Figueredo, Worrell and Rucker will be the back three. I've dropped Hefele because he's upset with me. So, you know what, I thought, screw you, I'm going to make you even more angry with me. Midfield trio of uh, Panagiotis, Yates and Osborne once again. Matty Cash and Joey Lolly are the two wingers. Zach Clough will be the striker. Michael Oberfemi and Jake Vokins are on the bench. I suspect they will be coming on at some point. 
more specifically Oberfemi. If Clough's playing badly, Oberfemi's coming on. If one of the wings is playing badly, Oberfemi is coming on. Now, this is a game that is ideal for picking up three points. Barnsley, arguably not one of the best sides in the league. Definitely a team that we should be looking to defeat. So hopefully we can cruise on by Barnsley. I'm going with a 2-0 victory. 15 minutes in, nothing has happened so far. We've had two or three shots now, but no highlights. And time is disappearing very quickly. Rucker with a throw. Panagiotis. Lloyd Isgrove has managed to head it further clear, though. Rucker. Ben Osborne. Panagiotis. Rucker's got acres of space on the left-hand side. If he can cross it in, he does cross it in. The keeper fists it clear. Yates back to Panagiotis. Yates again. Finds Matty Cash, spins, finds Joe Lolly, has an effort, it comes to Matty Cash, and Matty Cash on the half volley has made it 1-0, his second goal of the season. The wingers is where goals are coming from in this game, and I don't really understand it, but I'm happy that it's happening. Ten minutes to go until half-time, Yates has had a go from outside the area. Was that the whole highlight? The keeper easily claims it. Davies, long kick up field towards the striker. Figueredo heads forward though. Ground, long ball forward. Corley Woodrow's in on goal and Corley Woodrow cannot miss from there. Jonathan Grounds' assist route one football from Barnsley has put them back into this game. It's not really what I wanted to happen. I want. I mean, we've had ten shots. And they've had like two and they've, they're have they on par with us. Boyd crosses in. Woodrow's there. Worrell heads clear. Mowat. Edge of the area. Boyd gets it back. What the hell? Did he just do a panaka? And then Lloyd Isgrove scored. Is it called a panaka? I don't know. It looked like Boyd did that. And Lloyd Isgrove has put Barnsley 2-1 in front. What's this? He didn't do it that time. I swear the first... No, no. Here we go. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Yes, he did. You cheeky son of a bitch. Lloyd Isgrove, great finish from the uh, former Saints man. Shouldn't be losing, though, to Barnsley. Half time, then. We are getting FM'd. Two shots, two on target, two goals for Barnsley. 15 5 on target for us, just the one goal from Matty Cash. I need to shout at people. I need to be aggressive. Show me something else because you need to start scoring goals and maybe, just maybe, stop conceding them as well. 51 minutes. Yates on the ball. Back to Panagiotis, Osborne, Panagiotis. These three passing it round in the middle. Dariqua on the right-hand side. If he can get past his man and cross it in, he jumps over George Boyd's tackle and plays it backwards. Yates spins, smashes it into the back of there. The keeper should have saved it, really, but Ryan Yates gets his second goal of the season. It is 2-2. We should be winning this game. We need to win this game. I think if we don't pick up three points, this is a bit of a failure. On our mark, Zach Clough is coming off. Michael Oberfemi is going to be coming on, actually... What we're going to do is we're going to do that. Can Matty, neither of you can play on that wing. No, but we're going to put it back to what it was. That makes the most sense. I want to bring on Vokens as well. Let's bring on Vokens. Let's bring both the uh, the young Saints players on. Hopefully Vokens can do a better job than Rook has done because he's not really done a huge amount. Final 15 minutes. We've got a corner. Osborne's going to take it. Deep to Panagiotis. Controls it. Oberfemi. Yates has a go. And Ryan Yates has made it 3-2. His third goal of the season. Oberfemi with the assist. Lovely cartwheel for a celebration. We've got 15 minutes. I don't want to just hold on to this lead. I want to extend it. I want to win 4-2. Final five minutes. Davies with a goal kick. Over the halfway line, Figueredo heads forward, Jackson heads back towards us, so Mowat on the halfway line, McGeehan, Jackson, ball forward, Corley Woodrow, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, Pantillamon saves it, and the rebound goes off of Worrell, it's going to be a corner, there is four minutes left to play, Mowat takes the corner to the front post, Yates clears it easily, they have a free kick, Mowat towards the penalty spot, Figueredo clears, Mowat's going to get the ball back, and passes it to Michael Oberfemi. Go on, Michael. You're the only one up there. You just have to do this. What is that? Has he gone for goal? He's gone for goal. That was an embarrassment. And he's picked up a knock. He's literally just picked up a knock as well. Lolly with a corner towards the penalty spot. Cleared by Jackson. We've got 40 seconds to play. Lolly gets the ball back. Panagiotis. Figueredo. Number 55. Panagiotis is going to get there first. Osborne. Osborne all the way back to the halfway line to Dariqua. Panagiotis. Yates. To Osborne. Osborne tries to find the fullback but can't do it. Figueredo cuts it out. Vokens. Panagiotis. We're passing it around but we're not going anywhere. Tame passes into no one and Lolly claims the ball and it is full time. Ryan Yates has saved our bacon there. 73% possession. We need to learn to score goals. If we can convert that and that into that, we'll be fine. Two games in then. Everyone has played two games. We are up into eighth place. Obviously undefeated, but there's a lot of teams also undefeated. We are... We're doing okay. I'm happy with this start. 
Oberfemi is out for three to five days. That's fine. He, he's he's going to come off the bench. That's going to be his main use, I think, for us this season. Ryan Yates, however, who is a box-to-box midfielder by trade, hasn't really played a lot of football for us. Only nine games for Forrest. And se- only seven last season. I think I probably picked him for most of them. He, so far, has played twice and scored three goals. Ryan Yates is a little bit of a star in the making, I think. Next episode, we are going to go to the start of September. So we're going to have Norwich and we're going to have Fulham, which is literally just a couple of days afterwards. I was going to do the Sheffield double, both at the city ground, but it's too early in the season to tell. I want to kind of play a nice sort of four or five games off camera so I can get a, get to grips with a new team because obviously we've we've had to trim a lot of players from the squad. So I need to work out who's best playing where. And I think... Swansea, Swansea's a big game. Sheffield United, Sheffield Wednesday, Scunthorpe. I reckon we could probably get three wins out of those. I really, I really think we could. That is going to do it then for this episode. Hopefully, by next episode, Lewis Graben has left the club and signed for Rangers. I don't. Is the deal still going on? Is it still? It is still going on. So Lewis Graben might be off. He's on a contract offer at the moment. Can we find out when does your? Uh, oh, what am I doing? When does your transfer window shut? When does it close? Transfer window. It shuts on the 2nd of September. So you've still got quite a while to go in your transfer window. So hopefully the uh, grab and deal to Rangers will take place. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager 2019 with Nottingham Forest. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And I will see you next time for Norwich and whoever else I said it was going to be. Fulham. I'll see you next time.